Good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you can hear everything okay because as we were kind of like chucking out the uh, intro, the bit rate on Twitter just went... <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully I'm speaking at a normal uh, pace and you're not just kind of like getting... Some sort of like Silent Hill nurse sort of movements on the screen. Hopefully, hopefully it's all good. But anyway, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the channel. It is 10 a.m. Well, it's 30 minutes past. It's 10 a.m. ish. So, true to form, we are live at 10 a.m. ish on twitch.tv forward slash ice cream uploads. Trickle in, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We know there's a lot of people sat at home that may not get the chance to jump into the scoop on a work day. So, if you, if you haven't been here before, my name is Graham Day and this absolute hero. Is is me? Uh, hey, 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 hey. No, well, obviously, it's me. Yeah, let's let's let's. Uh, so this is the baby. Let's, 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 I, always, I always jump to the scoop screen. I should always just you know, now. Now we've got it. I should jump into the split screen like this. There we go. Nice hair, babe. Yeah, I mean, I was contemplating putting hat on, but I'd already committed to the do. So yeah, I, uh, do you know I'm? I'm probably not much better, to be fair. One second. Yeah. Ah, so. <laughs> Uh, no. R.I.P. All headphone users, as Bibby uh, deafens you all at the expense of one butter. <laughs> <laughs> worth it. Worth it. Worth it. Worth it. Worth it. Anyway, yeah, welcome. From all. Welcome in. You can feel free to submit your breakfast requests to Bib, uh, and you can pick them up as long as you maintain a safe distance when collecting from El Casa de Bibi. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, we are ice cream, and this is the scoop. The self-proclaimed says says us. I mean, I mean, it's kind of self-proclaimed, but you know, the, no whole, the, with the, us, whole, the whole world knows that this is the UK's number one video games podcast, and we go live on Twitch at 10 a.m. ish each and every single weekday uh, at 10 a.m. I've just said that. Hey, <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, uh, nothing's got to change as well. Not not for the foreseeable, anyway. Not right now. As far as we're aware, we are still continuing to roll this out at. 10 a.m. ish each and every single weekday. So obviously the world is kind of messing up outside, but we will stay inside with you. So feel free to drop in each and every single weekday. If things change, if we have to move timings around or whatever, we will let you know. But our plans at present are to keep giving you your full scoopalicious daily dose of news from the games industry and beyond each and every single weekday. Um, we are not in the studio, so you won't see the ice cream upload studio for a while. Uh, Bibby is in his home studio, as you can see just there. I'm in my home studio, as we can see just here and we will continue to do the remote format of the scoop for a while going forward because uh those of you that know we are ice cream and obviously we are part of the company jelly jelly and ice cream goes together uh, anyway jelly has decided that because of all the coronavirus happenings we will shut our doors uh send everyone home and then let us work remotely which is why we're we back here and if you do tune into the scoop you will see that this is something we do anyway we do this set up on a wednesday and a thursday anyway but we will do this uh most days going forward now uh, so yes, anyway, what is the scoop? We give you our thoughts and impressions on the biggest and best stories from the games industry each and every single weekday. I might have mentioned that we go live at 10am on twitch.tv forward slash if you've been listening. Um, but yeah, we give you our thoughts and impressions and we want your thoughts and impressions on our thoughts and impressions. It's a discussion. We want a two-way thing, you see, uh, and then... That's important because obviously we go live on Twitch and you can watch the video live on Twitch. You can watch the video on demand on Twitch, but we also turn it into a standalone on-demand podcast that we put out on YouTube around an hour or so uh, after the show has finished. You need to turn your mic down the tiniest bit. It's not my mic, it's my voice. <laughs> uh, I can do that, I can do that, I can do that. Where's my, where's my uh, audio level? Oh, yeah, yeah, I can see what you mean. I'm peaking. Oof. Why is it so Ooh, loud? Baby. Okay, test, 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 that should be hopefully fine. Uh, it's, I'm not peeking anymore, so hopefully that's okay. Actually, yeah, 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 yeah. Man. I'm testing. There we go. Uh, RIP headphone users. Sorry, I apologize. Um, so yeah, we go live on Twitch, as mentioned. Obviously, we turn this into a standalone on-demand video podcast that we put out on YouTube a little bit later on in the day. So if you are in the chat, feel free to get involved. Uh, as Rise has just done by telling him that my uh, microphone's too loud, and I'm <laughs> deafening him. Uh, but also feel free to get involved in the conversation as we go on to because also after putting on YouTube we turn this into an audio podcast that goes on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud and Google Play so that everyone whilst they're isolated they can tune into their number one isolation station that's Bibby's phrase by the way we got there first <laughs> if you see anyone else using it out there Ice Cream got there first so yeah 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 yeah, uh, yeah man anyway good weekend Bib uh, uh, yes did quite a bit of streaming actually 
no co-op though with Greyman stream. No, no co-op with Greyman stream. No. No. I, I, no, I didn't give no. the people what they wanted, did I? Really? But hey ho. Did you say hey ho? We call him Dad and Lad Gaming. Don't call him ho. <laughs> uh, I mean, good morning, Dad and Lad Gaming in the chat. <laughs> but yeah, I did a bit of streaming this weekend, and that uh, went and did our week's worth of shopping on Saturday morning. Which took us about three hours because there was queues absolutely everywhere. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much us in for the foreseeable now, as it should be. I may be blowing my nose. <laughs> so yeah, that's it for the foreseeable now. I will be in the house, not going anywhere. Well, we um, <clears throat> we went to do our shop, um, and I mean, obviously there'll be we're not gonna. Uh, on about social distancing too much because you'll see it all over Twitter if you want to see videos of numpties just kind of like looking like a Shaun of the Dead scene trying to get into Tesco first thing in the morning. Uh, yeah. But we went out and uh, for our sins um, we needed to buy toilet roll which was an absolute mission. So three, Oh my god. Yeah, three supermarkets later um, we finally found some and I swear people are just Thank you. baffling. Just trying, I'm stood in a queue trying to pay for things at the till and i'm thinking okay me and danielle stood there uh, and then in front of us was s some woman buying stuff so danielle left a massive gap for the woman behind me the bloke was pretty much touching the back of my neck with the tip of his nose it's like move the fuck away <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely no social no no one gives a shit do they absolute whoppers man uh, danielle was like should have turned around and coughed <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would have been great I'm locked up. They won't let me. I'm locked. Up. I thought that, I thought you were saying that. Like, yeah, I didn't realise. I was like, I'm locked up. They won't. There's only the multiple T's that I twigged. Ah ha! Won't <laughs> let me out. Anyway, let's jump into some news for today. Obviously, we can talk about the isolation situations and and having to windmill numpties in Aldi and everything else that we've been doing on the weekend. But I mean, punches when I say windmill, by the way, not what you were thinking. And I, <laughs> no, <laughs> Willie Raven. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. So let's jump straight into the news. Take your mind off everything. Anyway, we have a few stories today, including uh, something that isn't very surprising when it comes to Nintendo. Written by Zach Zwiezen. What a name. Uh, for Kotaku <laughs> UK. Uh, Sony pulls popular Mario creation from dreams after Nintendo complaint. So one of the most popular and downloaded Mario character models in the PS4 game Dreams has been removed after Sony received a complaint from Nintendo. As reported by Eurogamer, a Dreams creator by the name of Piece of Craft, who made uh, the popular Mario model, recently tweeted that, uh, the news that Sony had pulled their Mario from the game. When fans asked why, Piece of Craft explained that in an email they received from Sony, it mentioned that Nintendo had claimed a copyright strike on the model. Uh, and then there's an embedded tweet within the article that says, doesn't necessarily mean they claimed it, uh, could just be some jealous creator as you can claim copyright with the report button. Uh, and then Piece of Craft says, no, in the email it tells you to claim the copyright strike. And in this case, it says Nintendo. So almost since the moment Dreams was available to the public, people have been creating games, models, and music based on non-Sony IP. Uh, IP, for those that you don't know, is intellectual property. Um, so the first time I booted up Dreams back in early access, it was already filled with Mario, Sonic, and Doom levels. For a while, it seemed that these cre uh, creations were mostly safe, but this no longer seems to be the case. Piece of Craft can no longer edit or change their Mario model as, it's been, uh, as it has been flagged for containing copyrighted material. And now, moving forward, other creators or players won't be able to find it and download it for use in their own levels or games. Uh, another embedded tweet, someone asking Piece of Craft a question says, uh, when it says removed from dreams, I'm guessing others just can't access it anymore, but the creator still can. And his response is, well, I can and I can't. I can remix it, but the original I can no longer edit and other... Uh, and others will not be able to uh, be will not be able to find or be able to use. Not too sure what will happen to levels that use the Mario. Uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see. It's kind of like a slap on the wrist. And then back into the article. Uh, Piece of craft and others aren't sure what, uh, sure what will happen to any current creations that now feature the removed model. It seems like, at least for the time being, popular dream games like Super Mario 64 HD are still active and playable, even though they contain the now removed model. Uh, while we don't know the exact reasons why Nintendo decided to remove this Mario model, uh, some are speculating Nintendo is now closely watching the game and its creations after announcement that Media Molecule, uh, the developers behind Dreams, will start allowing players to make money on their creations. It isn't surprising that Nintendo has started to crack down on their IP 
being used in dreams and nintendo has a long long history of legally blocking and shutting down fan games and mods and uh remote go-karting situations in uh tokyo or wherever it was we reported on the other week so <laughs> yeah if you were planning on making a nintendo themed creation in dreams maybe just switch his name to maurio and make him a carpenter instead just to be safe <laughs> Uh, nice end to that article. GG's points there, Mr. Zach Zach Zwiesen. What a name. What a name. So, Bibe, uh, I know you were just about to release like seven iterations of Mario games on Dreams uh, under yep. the banner of Ice Cream Uploads, but I don't think we can do that anymore. No, it's, uh, it's it was inevitable, really. As soon as you put anything Nintendo in there... Um... It was. It's gonna get canned. It's not. It's never gonna stay. Out, it's not gonna stay out long enough for people to play. It. But there is one line in here that made me laugh a little bit. It says, "It seems like at least for the time being, popular dreams games like Super Mario 64 HD are still active and playable, even though they contain the now removed model. What are you controlling then? <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just like, it's an, like a an giant outline. spatula or something." <laughs> It's very odd, but yeah, it's it, it was inevitable at this point. It's um, it's going to be interesting to see if this sets a precedent for the rest of the um, other IPs like Sonic and potentially uh, the Doom Slayer or whatever it could be, like they've referenced in the article, get taken down eventually. Uh, but uh, will it? It's going to lead to a lot more original characters being created, I reckon. Well, they may take some of the, the, the level designs from the likes of Sonic if they're going to make a, a 2D platformer or something like that, but just change the art style up so that it doesn't look like Sonic and then put a completely different original character in its place instead. Yeah, that's where you get, like, Samic the Hodgehead or something like that. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. I mean, it's it's a shame, but it's, it's, it's understandable. Um, it's a shame in the fact that someone's gone through creating an homage to mario uh, and mm -hmm. it's the same sort of mentality really um i mean not entirely but let, let me uh, go with it but it's the same sort of mentality as someone that creates a youtube play along video i mean nintendo took uh, uh do you know actually something we just spoke about my phone's just flashed up shout out to uh jb who's replied that gif you shouldn't be high-fiving in this trouble time uh me and bibby were just talking about uh we need to get the social distancing version of that high five on the uh, social media whenever we post the go live tweets because someone's just said the same thing <laughs> you shouldn't be high-fiving. <laughs> don't touch people um but yeah it's it's, it's the uh, mentality of nintendo pulling um the content oh we have noises and ears king comic thank you very much for the host very very much appreciate how's things this morning hope you guys are doing well uh yeah not doing too bad. Not doing too bad. how about you uh indoors staying away from people i hope you are enix in the chat as well yo um actually before i jump back there let's jump back up uh one of my mates was in the middle of a tesco near his and he could barely move uh, with everyone in so his mrs cop really loud and everyone cleared away from him in the store GG. <laughs> 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 oh look at Absolutely. all the space <laughs> you can't put like a little little minute <gasps> you need to go for the pull <laughs> <laughs> you've been coughing for days now love <laughs> you really get need to see that get checked out <laughs> uh but yes so Nintendo aren't uh, scared of pulling things that potentially infringes their copyrights at all. They've, they've done it a million and one times, and they were slow to get on the uptake. Uh, uh, no, they're slow to get off the uptake of banning videos uh, that were uploaded to YouTube. So any other video game in the world, content creators, we were playing video games as fair use uh, to make content. So the, their content, their video games were the center of the, the content, but not... Uh, no, they, they were the function, but not the center of the content. The content was about the game playing having fun with it and almost every other company in the world was like yeah yeah that's fine it's good marketing for the game it's good marketing for you it's a nice bit of communal interaction it's wonderful and the world moved forward but nintendo were really slow to get there um so that kind of applies to dreams uh in the fact that people are wanting to create content have fun time share share experiences with other people uh however i think the key thing in there and it was mentioned in the article was the the fact that Dreams are now looking at making Dreams a monetizable platform for creators. So if you can make money off of Mario um, and uh, Nintendo aren't getting a share of it, naturally they're going to be pissed because that is their IP. That's their property. And if you make money off yeah. of their property, then understandable, understandable. 
Yeah. Uh, it, there was a. Do you remember the Sonic Mania game that came out a couple of years ago? It was about two years ago, I think. Uh, I'm was, aware of it. I haven't played it though. Yeah. So the Sonic Mania games was made up of people who made fan Sonic games historically. Um, there was like obviously EXE files or just like public domain, <clears> like <throat> you could get on Game Jolt or whatever, um, and. There was their levels was better than most pe most of the people who was creating them officially for Sega, and uh, so they ended up getting the people who was making the fan made games and getting them on board for the Sonic Mania game. So that was made up of like people who was creating fan games forever, and um, that was better than some of the stuff that they was putting out as of re uh, recently. So they in uh, they embraced the community support around Sonic Mania and Sonic itself to make an epic game that fans absolutely adored by the end of it. So I don't understand... Well, I do understand it from their standpoint. They want to look after their own IP. But the bigger picture is people could be doing something better than you are. Embrace that and then look to have a change what you're doing to try and cater for uh, the way that gaming moves on. Um, with if People's tastes change over time. Like There's a reason why we don't have just a 2d um mario game anymore with it being a platformer we now have a 3d mario worlds like uh, for for instance super mario 64 super mario odyssey super mario sunshine things like that things change and people's taste change so why not try and evolve with that see what's actually going on in media molecules dreams because at the moment that is one of the biggest games out there in terms of creating new ways that people play so i don't understand why they want to do that for the time being they probably could have just left it for like another couple of months to see what gets made in there and then hit them with it just so they can have a look for themselves so they can may take some inspiration from what people are creating and then bring embrace it themselves i don't know it's i think the uh the key thing there is nintendo taking inspiration they don't they they are the least reactive company that uh, I mean, obviously, someone will probably give you something that's actually this is a bit more apparent. But but Nintendo, uh, we were talking about Tenten. If you if you can't join them, make them. Uh, so all these communities that were like, okay, we want to make a, uh, a a Pokemon RPG that's 3D and you can go out and you can battle and and, uh, and capture and and it's amazing. And people have been clamoring for that for years, and it's technically possible if we can have a world that has GTA uh, or even not even that. Uh, just a game that's a fraction of the percentage uh, of GTA, uh, GTA. Look at yeah. the, the the dev time, the shells, uh, the, the the cell shading. Uh, all, well, not cell shading. The the design development side thing. A Pokemon game. What satisfies the needs and urges and wants of the Pokemon community at large would be a, a, a tiny, tiny thing in comparison to something like GTA. But Nintendo are like, no, we will hold off for that for 20, 25, 30, 40, 50, 60 <laughs> yeah. years. We will we will keep holding them, and that's that's kind of what they do. So Temtem, um, obviously, is a game that's out there that satisfies that urge, and, and no wonder it's, I mean, it's still in early access. It had a huge spike, and obviously it's dropped off as everything does. People have played it, they've got the idea, but more content is coming, and the game will get better, and they're looking at... Um, marketing and doing everything they can with that esports wise and and you just think nintendo you've had the opportunity to do that forever and yeah they, could, yeah. they still have the opportunity if nintendo just did that with pokemon it would just blow it all out of the water but I, I can't see nintendo doing what sonic mania you've done i can't see them looking at dreams and going oh that's a really good idea that's a really good idea that when it comes to that that those products they are very much this is our, our idea and we are going to run with it and we're going to stick with it and not just necessarily um mario but the consoles this this is the wii u this is this is exactly what we need to deliver right now and it's like yeah is, is it is it sometimes they nail it sometimes they don't obviously the ds yeah. and and the wii and now the switch nailing it but but yeah they do what they want to do which is good it's good that they have a vision it's good that they have a dream and it's good that they want to stick with it but um you can also see that it's also good to take inspiration and be aware and have your finger on the pulse of what's happening in the community out there with around your product that that yes may not be adding money to your pockets but might be adding to the overall concept of what what that game is and what it means to people definitely uh, can i ask if you guys have played the game dreams and is it possible to make a football game says king comic uh, i haven't uh, and i imagine it's it's possible to do anything in dreams yeah right? I mean, I've seen uh, full worlds created, and I've seen a full English created. Everything in between must be possible in there, I'd imagine. So, yeah, I reckon so. Uh, Sonic Forces is... Shut up! Shut up! Stop! 
Alexa, stop. I said, I reckon so. Not calling you, you stupid, stupid robot thing. Flashing over for a minute. Sonic Forces is free on PS Store. I think, I think I got that. That's this month's PS Plus games, right? right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I wonder if they could have sued Dad with his lyrics uh, to World 1, 2 and Super Mario Brothers when he told us the music had the words that just repeated, Cooper is a bastard. Cooper is a bastard. Cooper is a bastard. That, that was... <laughs> Uh, that's growing up in the in the day household. Good morning, David. Uh, morning, gents. Says Chucky boy. Good morning. Morning, Chucky. Uh, did you just make a noise then? No, believe it or not, that was my throat because <laughs> I just had a drink and I don't know what the hell that was. Ah. But I think I think I'm going under, lads. <laughs> ah. Ah. I don't know what the hell that was. Is your inner devil trying to get out? Ah, what my. So yes, if you are interested in playing Dreams, I think you follow King Comics. Uh, King Comics' request of uh, making a football game, do not make a Mario game because Nintendo are just not going to let it happen. Unless you're a, a dude that wears uh, red overalls with a blue t-shirt and and changes it into to some like Super Mac. Make Super Mac. Uh, oh, yeah, job's good. Uh, well, it sounds like the stuff of Dreams uh, might make a purchase. And do you guys remember a game called Music Generator? Uh, generator wish they bring that back there was quite a few there was music uh music 2000 and 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 a few other things like that i used to play um i think the last time we spoke about dreams we, we went dropping into music i think david I, either brought it up or or reaffirmed what it was that we playing but yeah music on the playstation one spent forever in that uh but anyway anyway Let's not focus on this story for too long because Nintendo stopping things, especially when people are being creative right now, isn't what we we kind of need in the world. Let's go on to something a little bit more distracting. Yeah, Music 2000. There we go. There we go. Uh, so our next story, um, it, it's creative, but not very helpful because nobody can play it anymore. But let's jump into it anyway. So here's further proof that PT really is the most frightening horror game of all time. Written by Vicky Blake for Eurogamer. She says that... Int- uh, no, actually, tagline. I'm very sorry about what you're about to see. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, and uh, let's jump back onto Bibby's camera. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, intrepid modder Lance McDonald is back with perhaps the most unsettling PT hack yet. Beyond swiveling the camera to see if Lisa is indeed following you as you loop the corridor. Spoilers. Yes, she is. Ah! Uh, I'm showing what happens to Lisa after she smashes the upstairs window. The highlight for this particular episode comes from revealing precisely what's going on when you're locked in the bathroom after discovering the torch. Remember that bit when you pick up the flickering torch and discover the uh, surprise in the bathroom uh, sink? The door slams shut. Fumbling with the handle, you realise you can't escape. And then footsteps echo from the hallway beyond the door. Then an unseen force tries to jiggle the handle to enter the room. Well, it was unseen. And while you'd be forgiven for presuming that the footsteps are, are just a disquieting, uh, disquieting audio scare, McDonald's, uh, also uh, F's in the chat for McDonald's, going on to, well, stopping today. Anyway, uh, McDonald's discovered something truly horrifying by unlocking the camera and peering into the hitherto unaccessible corridor. It turns out that Lisa is really there, creeping towards the bathroom. And while developers didn't go... Uh, as far as to animate Lisa physically handling the door handle, they did go as far to ensure that the ghost is very really there, just inches from you on the other side of the door. So it turns out Lisa is doing quite a few things in PT, even when we're not able to see her, not really cut content or anything like that, just surprising amounts of detail and work that went into the teaser for Silent Hills that never actually got to be seen by players, McDonald said in the video description. Here, take a look for yourself. And the video is embedded in there. Uh, and then final couple of paragraphs. In related news, McDonald's also managed to escape from PT's endless hallway and step out into Kojima Productions' rendi- rendition of the streets of South Hill. They also contributed to another video that gives us a look at PT from a new angle. And there's some interesting and terrifying discoveries to find there too. Anyway, I'll leave it there because that's a lot of uh, clickbaity stuff. I'll hit play on this video whilst we keep chatting though. Um, so, yes. Uh, have you seen this, babe? Uh, I haven't, and I'm currently watching it right now. Uh, oh, let's get rid of the adverts. Get out of here. Uh, skippings, skippings. So, yeah, for those of you that haven't seen this, this is... Um, you may not want to watch as well if you're watching on um, video services if you haven't played PT. Not that 
it's really a spoiler because you can't really spoil something that you don't get a chance to play because <laughs> it's not <laughs> available anymore. For others, uh, for the people that don't know, rewinding, PT was obviously the playable teaser um, for the uh, technology and the uh, everything that could be Silent Hills, uh, a game from Konami that, that ended up being pulled um, about five years ago-ish. Uh, and essentially, you are trapped in a complete mind feck. You are in this L-shaped sort of hallway that just loops and, and loops and loops and loops. Um, and within it, you are being uh, how can, how, psychologically traumatized. Uh, yeah, I think that's probably the perfect words to describe this game. Like this bit absolutely terrifies me. Uh, what terrified me? Like you're looking around and you're like, why is that window falling through? And you're like, oh, oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, that Lisa being stood there staring at you, you're like, uh, is she going to do something? And and you kind of like, you, you don't know what happens with it. You don't know where she's gone. You can't get up there. You can't see anything. Anyway, this video. Uh, essentially now has the ability to get up and around the house like check out the upper floors check out whatever and essentially that is um what we see a little bit later on so there you go he's upstairs with with lisa oh i laugh um this, you can see there's no textures nothing up there it's just a dark sort of like hallway but the fact that um they put the effort in of animating her disappearing and dissolving into the floor that's nice that's, that's nice and cool but then the other bit uh, we're talking about being uh, locked in the bathroom. Uh, where is that? Have I gone past it? Have I gone past it? Have I gone past no, it? skip to about three, three forty-five. Hey, there we go. Uh, that's that's a slightly different bit. So that's her. Uh, there's another a scene where you, where you coming up to a door. There you go, and you see the door shuts, and it's like, uh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> It's been so long since I've heard that that noise. I don't know if you can hear that bit, but uh, yeah, Barry and Drake, yeah. thank you very much for the raid, dude. Much appreciated. We usually turn the uh, the raid noises off while we're doing the uh, the scoop, so we don't uh, interrupt the podcasting things. But thank you very much, appreciate very much appreciate. Yeah. Anyway, thank I'll, you very much, mate. Do you know what? we'll leave the video a bit there? Anyway, discussing that video. Good morning, everyone that's uh, been enjoying Thary and Drake's. I hope you've had a very good stream. And what have you been streaming? That's the question. That's the question. Have you been doing uh, your own sort of show you've been playing games let us know let us know um but yes we are ice cream my name is graham this is bib and we usually on a monday morning are streaming from the ice cream upload studio but because uh everything's happening in the world at the moment we are now chilling out at home so that's why we, we look like this that's why we're in our home setups <laughs> i was doing art ah, interesting what kind of art uh uh i mean i wish i had the ability to be creative enough to excel at any form of art i mean i used to be used to be good at drawing but but that was about a million years ago i mean jeroon who's a member of the, the team i mean he's our resident artist but i don't know if he's in the chat right now thank you very much for the uh, follow no clips much appreciated so what and we so from chucky as well oh i didn't even see the, the sub. thank you very much chucky uh let me just add our discussing now text uh i was doing emotes that's sick i don't are these some of the emotes that you've drawn yourself Layla Blue. They are sick. Do you know what? Just going to leave the uh, discussing now text as the most obvious yeah. thing in the world. PT is terrifying. There we go. Let's just leave it there. Uh, I was doing my emotes for Layla. Ah, Mad Viking, etc. Uh, Tito, good morning. Uh, are you back for more WWE talk? Is is is, is the thing? Hey, morning, gents. Do, uh, do your bosses know you're streaming when you should be working? Uh, well, Graham is my boss, so yes, I hope so. So his boss does, mine doesn't. It's... <laughs> <laughs> everything, everything you see in the chill, nice. I do it all free and work on a donation process. Oh, that's badass, badass. Uh, what a guy! I'm liking the uh, the hype emote. That's that's very much ice cream. Uploads. That is us, isn't it? Yeah, that yeah. is us. So we we <clears throat> for, the, for those of you that don't know, we are ice cream uploads. We are um, a channel that does many things. We have a studio which will be out of commission for the next few months because of COVID. Um, but we do everything from the scoop, which is what this is. It's your daily show at 10 a.m. We, we kind of pull apart the news that's happened in the games industry. But we also do a bunch of streams, be it home streams, be it uh, whatever. But then we uh, have tournaments, invitational tournaments. And we had a series of three tournaments called the uh, Ice Cream Uploads Invitationals 1, 2, and 3, uh, which were based on football. And we went with that sort of 80s retro synthwave sort of sunset styling. Uh, and that hype one looks very, very much like that. It's pretty, pretty good. It's pretty good. 
Do you know what, actually? Whilst, whilst, whilst we're here, I'm going to... Morning helps as well. Oh, oh yeah. <clears throat> I apologise, I was just clearing my throat there. Uh, can, well, uh, congratulations, Alpi, on getting affiliate as well this weekend. Oh, nice. I've seen that you just got two sub badges there. Well, a sub badge. I'll just hit follow on uh, Harry and Drake's channel. I'm going to check out your emotes. Uh, I want to do it on stream now because... Because we are turning this into a, we turn well, we actually obviously live on Twitch now, um, but we'll turn this into a video podcast that goes out on YouTube, and then we turn it into an audio podcast that goes on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, Google Play. Um, so uh, we don't want to distract too much from that. So what we were talking about though is the fact that um, for those of you that may have played PT, and for those of you that may have not played PT, PT was uh, essentially a tech demo for the New South Hills game, which uh, a lot of people played, and then it was pulled from. Uh, the PlayStation Store, uh, so it can't be played anymore. But anyway, um, Lance McDonald, a modder, has gone through and he started pulling that game apart and he's found that um, you are essentially being stalked and teased by Lisa, the, the, the ghost within the game, a lot more than anyone thought. Uh, check the emotes, though. <laughs> Is he the cat? <laughs> <laughs> uh, GG, though. I mean, getting uh, affiliate already, that's, that's pretty rapido. GG. I mean, we don't have a cat in our remote, so that's what I'm saying, Bib. I mean, we've got we've got a cat behind Bib, but yeah, we don't yeah, have we've a got, cat. We've got a <laughs> so yes, I think this is the bit on the video. Actually, I'll I'll bring the video back on uh, the article. So yeah, essentially, as you're in this room uh, within uh, PT, you can you can hear steps coming down the hallway, and the door handle uh, gets tried. Um, and as anyone that would be playing that game, you never actually get to see what's outside of the door. Uh, so you just assume that it's just like pff, 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 steps coming down the hallway. But they actually animated this, so you don't get to see this. This is them modding the camera and putting it out in the hallway. So they've actually gone through the effort of making Lisa stroll down the corridor. Uh, I mean, she, they've not animated her grabbing hold of the door handle and twisting it, but you can see, like, to that point, the amount of detail that's gone in there, that's pretty sick. Yeah, but I don't know if this is uh, this is probably going to be a stupid thing because I say a lot of those things, but for them to not just put a soundtrack in the background because they would have just created all the assets and played it out in order of how they should have been played out, and then literally just stuck the camera in places where you would then be seeing these things as a first person experience. So, do you reckon it would have been easier for them to roadmap all of these things out in one go? get them all animated and then playing them all at the same time rather than them just taking bits out at certain stages. I, I, I don't quite follow. Right, so obviously you're not, you wasn't meant to see Lisa walking down the corridor there, was you? You're, you're, at this point, you're technically inside the door. Yeah. So her walking outside, do you think that that would have been easier for them to have her do that than just playing the sounds over the top of it? Because it, her walking down that corridor is a trigger in it. So you, you're inside the door. And then as the, as you're inside the door, the trigger would then force her to start walking down the corridor. Because they don't know that people are going to get modern cameras. Like, like I say, it was five years ago, if not longer. Was it 2014 that it came out? Or 15? 15, I think it was. The, yeah, think... so it was five years old. And even still to this day, people are still taking apart a 30-minute demo. So do you think they was expecting people to find this? Or do you think that they just put all this together because it was a nice little thing to be able to to have her walking down the corridor even though you never you're not never supposed to see her? They probably I mean the fact that it it will be uh, a trigger. So when you're in the room and you you kind of like pick up the flashlight, that is the trigger for uh, <clears throat> that to happen. I mean the trigger could have just been an audio trigger uh, and then the handle moving. They didn't need to make her stroll down the corridor as part of the trigger. But yeah, they probably have done that, expecting people to have pulled it apart so that they can see the level of detail that they went to. There was another uh, bit we kind of touched on it in the article where it, it says that um, McDonald manages to get out onto the streets of Silent Hill. And they, yeah. mu they must have... Have you seen that one? Yeah, we, we, we covered it on here. Uh, okay. Um, there must have been the knowledge that people will be ripping it apart because within that, uh, like as soon as... If you mod it... So so essentially, what the way that the game works is you're in a looping corridor and rather than it being a corridor that keeps looping, you essentially hit the exact same corridor again, but as you go through one door and... Uh, go out one door and come through the other... Yeah. Um, 
the game kind of says, okay, the, the parameters for this corridor have changed now. This is what this world looks like. So you get either bugs or you get a different soundtrack or you get a different function from the ghost or something. Um, but when you walk out of that door into Silent Hill um, on the roads, there is no floor. So you essentially to, you have to mod the game so that you can walk through yeah. and you fall through the floor. But they knew that people would be doing that. So they added the uh, the Lisa jump scare in for that. So if you go out into Silent Hill, you fall through the floor, then it's like, a, ah! It's like, ah! <laughs> uh, so I've, got, I've, I've just figured out how to word it better. <laughs> because I realised as I was saying it, this makes absolutely no sense. So... Do you reckon that they played the whole thing out and then at the very end put the cameras where they think would be more terrifying? Um, ish. I think I think they will have had ideas of where it was going to be first and and rewinding that back um, to conversations that we've had many times before about say like Kojima and Metal Gear Solid Five: Phantom Pain. That that intro scene where you where you're on like you're coming into uh, oh was it even Ground Zeroes it might be Ground Zeroes where you're essentially you're going into camp and you're down low and the reason you're down low looking up at people is because they wanted to give you the idea of, from a dog's perspective um, and I think they've probably had this with quite a lot of the angles in this game they've got an idea of where they want to be seeing things and how they want to see things but obviously they've probably then tried it yeah. and then gone eh, not quite sure that works and then tweaked it and, and <laughs> yeah. done it away. or or changed it up as they've gone um well, that, that's what i feel about it though because kojima will cover every single base there is to pot to possibly cover so the way i was trying to describe it horrifically i might add earlier uh, was that they could have technically had the entire roadmap played out and then at the end of it gone actually for the ultimate scares or the ultimate uh, psychological feel to it we'll just put a camera in this specific and we'll have the trigger going at this specific point while you're inside this room when you pick up something or when you're looking at the fetus, it starts to cry when you're walking down the corridor. Those kind of things, those triggers, I reckon they would have put them in perhaps after the fact rather than thinking, actually, if you have them, we'll build it around this particular scene. So you're walking down, okay, that's when that happens, that's when that happens. I do genuinely feel like because they've got all the assets created, like you say, the resources there would have been through the roof to try and get those kind of things done when they could have instantly just put a soundtrack in the background as you walk through or pick something up a sound it would trigger a soundtrack rather than having Lisa walking outside in the corridor. I like that. <clears throat> which which makes me think that they already had all this in place and they just at the end of it thought actually this works better if we do this. So rather than deleting the asset, they just kept it in but put a perspective from the other side. I think what's what's pretty cool is and also a little bit heartbreaking is the fact that when you see Lisa um in PT, she's either stood still like like, like she's being hung kind of like head leaning to the side or she's like pouncing on your face kind of thing but she's not walking down the corridor in that sort of like hunched over sort of fashion so they've clearly gone through the effort of animating that walking uh, down the yeah. corridor so which then makes you think how many more animations did they get because they won't have just gone actually we could you're not going to see it so uh, let's let's spend time either more capping or building this this walking animation that they wouldn't have spent that amount of time unless it existed already you've got a feel yeah so that makes you think okay how much more stuff had they already started to make and get in place so obviously if, if, if they've got lisa more capping and walking and, and and things like that did they was that part of a bigger plan for like say the full game did they have other bits in place yeah that's where you kind of think oh man just imagine that, that's what i'm thinking I mean, for those of you that haven't played it, I, the the thing with PT, I don't actually. I said, I take it. I'm not sure. I having played it, when I watch videos of it now, I get the same level of sort of like tension that I had playing it myself. And I, I don't know if that carries through or not. But even that bit where that window falls out and you look up that we saw on stream about ten minutes ago, where you look up and you see Lisa on the, the like upper level of the house, even seeing that, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it was it was way ahead of its time. I feel uh, in terms of well it, it kind of gave birth to i don't want to say resident evil 7 in the fact that it became first person because i never would have thought in a million years a resident evil game would ever go first first person barring the two uh is it two yeah the two gun shooter games that we had resident evil survivor one and two um they was obviously first person but it's 
very odd that they chose a first person mainline game for a Resident Evil game, but I 100% think that they looked on the other side of the wall and seen actually that Silent Hill looks badass. <laughs> we need to try and pull that kind of thing together. But again, it, that Resident Evil 7 brought Resident Evil back into the, the main line because before that we had Resident Evil 6, NAF, Resident Evil 5, okay, only if you're playing co-op, Resident Evil 4, decent and then obviously down the line but uh, i definitely think it give birth to a different type of horror game it's that psych horror is, is is kind of what scares me more than more than more so watching you play uh resi 3 that's obviously a different type of horror that uh, horror i mean it has some psych elements in it uh but it's yeah. it's the the uh it's quite bombastic at times and it's quite jump scary as well and and I do love, I love a jump scare. I love watching you have a jump scare. That's what I love. <laughs> <laughs> Which you can check out, by the way. Past broadcast last week, maybe played through the Resident Evil 3 demo. Um, but it's it's that feeling of where you just get absolutely just melted inside your own head. So playing a looping hallway, and it's just like, this, I know this doesn't work. By the time you second run through it, you're kind of like thinking, okay, I don't know where I am now. I don't know what's happening. So all of your touch with the outside world is gone. That The, the crumbling of those walls around you is what makes you so yeah. malleable and allowed to be manipulated so um, effectively, which then ties into what Madge has just said in the chat. It's a cruel reminder of a potential game that never was. It, you never know. It could be. It could be. Um, there was stories we covered last week saying there is potentially two um silent hill games in the works there is potentially there's rumors of episodic content there's rumors of kojima being involved and sony leading it i mean obviously take them all with a massive massive mountain of salt because yeah some things are possible some things are not but but i would say uh the the reason we got pt is because konami knew that that there was things that could be done with with the silent hill series i would expect yeah. more content uh be it with Sony, be it with Kojima, which would be a massive, massive story. I can't see that happening myself. But I, yeah, we will get some more. Whether it's Silent Hills, we will have to see. But I imagine, even without Kojima at the helm, the fact that, that, that some of the team at Konami will have will have been going through that process with him. Obviously, it was made by Kojima Productions, but that was obviously within Konami at the point in time. Someone will have the idea of, of the mantra, of the reasoning, of the direction that they were going with that. So... Yeah, we will get we will get another Silent Hill game definitely. Just just we don't know when. Um, seems like a chunk of resources put in it. Uh, maybe it's like an Easter egg too. Potentially, she, potentially, uh, she could have been t posing that. What? What? <laughs> uh, I, I, I. She could. I don't get it. <laughs> I can't take the words in. Uh, I doubt they thought people uh, would when the game was in development. Um, Okay, time has passed on. I don't know what we're talking about there. <laughs> See, I do this. I do this. I say things, people respond to me, and I forget what I said. Uh, once it was cancelled, then they might have thought people would hack it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Look at other games they've done, like Shadow of the Colossus. The map is beautiful and huge, and we're supposed to have like 60 Titans, but only had 13 because the technology wasn't there to hold that many. Yeah, that's that's another thing as well. Um, you look at the, the depth uh, in terms of the the surfaces within PT, uh, yes, it was a very very small game in terms of the size of the, the map, so to speak. But there was a lot of detail in there. You have that level of detail for a, for a fucking huge world, then yeah, suddenly it becomes difficult. But I reckon you probably, if PT was to be a thing, I think that sort of closed confined um, sort of reality would be present throughout. I would have, I would have, I wouldn't have expected a lot. Um, happening in the open world while you're out in the streets, but but then again, I have no idea. It's my guesses. Uh, nobody knows. Let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, did you manage to find all of your um, bobbleheads? Bobbleheads. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, no, I have six, but apparently the six that are still yet to find are only triggered by Nemesis. Ah, so you have to get Nemesis and then ignore him. Yes, pretty much. Um, so I don't actually know where they are, so it will literally take me forever, I think, uh, to try and learn the pattern of where Nemesis actually flies to, because if for those of you that actually watched the stream when I did it live, we had Nemesis flying onto walls, which I wasn't expecting whatsoever, like Spider-Man. Um, so, yeah, he only they only become available when he triggers certain things, so I'll have to figure out where they are. Okay. 
Uh, well, I uh, have none myself. Yeah. Uh, no. So for those those of you that don't know, Bibby played through. Um, well, two two playthroughs essentially. I was it a bit more by the end of it because you you went and played through um, the Resident Evil Three demo, and then within that, there's a bunch of bobbleheads to get. So he got some of those, but then went back through it and using the help of the uh, the chat they were watching along, um, including Mister Asim Tambir, who doesn't appear to be here this morning. How dare he? Uh, unless he's of order. Unless, it, unless he's lurking, then in that case, we'll let you off. Um, running through the uh, the gameplay again to try and unlock. Well, to find all of the bobbleheads. Uh, I mean, while I just sat back and enjoyed and watched Nemesis scare Bibby into <laughs> oncoming zombies, which was fun. Which was fun. Uh, yeah, uh, that was good, great times. She didn't need to be animated to go down the hallway. Uh, it could have been T-posing down and just mapped down. Ah, ah yeah, yeah, I get yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get you now. Um, that's the thing. I, I, I believe exactly that. She, she, she didn't even need to be there, but the fact that she was there... Um, like you say, even they could have just the kind of three levels, not there at all. A simplified version or the fully animated version, and like you say, the, the fact that it's animated, you kind of feel that they wouldn't go through the effort using those resources, like you say, to go through to to make her appear in this hallway that you're not gonna see unless it was already created with the mindset of using it elsewhere. So it's just like, oh, we can we can put the audio in and and then just go. Actually, do you know what? I can make a walk down because we've got we've got these assets already created up so yeah we'll just throw that in she's throw down the, hall- uh, the hallway so that makes you think oh, yeah it, it has to have been uh already planned to be using that animation somewhere else there's no way they've done that morning fellas hope you're both well says camaldino uh how are your your winnings good sir I d- yeah as i said was it on twitter the other day or was it on chat i can't remember um but yeah i didn't realize that you not only won uh the ice cream what was the other jersey it was, was it the pez jersey and the ice cream jersey, pez jersey. Yeah, yeah 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 so two two jerseys the pez jersey that's just next to bibby on on his right hand side our left uh and an ice cream jersey you jammy jammy man i literally in fact i'm wearing them both so i've got the ice cream jersey on now <laughs> and then obviously the pez jersey that's all over there as well oh, my, my ice cream jersey is uh you can't quite see it just there on the door uh behind me but anyway let's jump back into some news um we have another story, and this one gets a little bit more topical with what's going on in the world right now. We tried to step away from it, but let's let's face it, we're going to come onto it a few times each and every single day. With it being a topical show, we have to get uh, real world topical. So this, written by Emily Geary of VG247, says GameStop temporarily closes its stores after temporarily even closes its stores after instructing staff to ignore coronavirus lockdown. And back into the news, GameStop will now temporarily close its retail locations across the U.S. and adopt a delivery-only approach starting March 22nd that the company announced today. This follows an earlier decision from company executives to keep its stores open even in the event of a full lockdown, claiming that it is essential retail like grocery stores and pharmacies, which are both exempt from enforced shutdowns. I mean... On one point, I can see it is. But anyway, let's move on. A letter obtained by Kotaku from GameStop CEO George Sherman tells store associates that GameStop stores... uh, Tell store associates that GameStop stores that remain open will only offer delivery at the door service where customers... Customizers? (laughs) What's a customizer? Is that a thing? (laughs) Anyway, where customizers will retrieve their order uh, curbside at the door of the store. Additionally, uh, GameStop is introducing new pay policy updates. Hourly employees who are eligible for paid time off will receive two weeks of additional pay, while those who are not uh, PTO eligible will receive two additional weeks of base pay calculated on the average uh, weekly average number of hours they've worked in the past 10 weeks. And then there's a quote within the article that says, I want to thank you all for your hard work as we continue to adjust our operations in response to the rapidly evolving coronavirus COVID-19. The letter begins, the health and safety of each of you, as well as our customers, is paramount and we have and will continue to take extensive precautions consistent with the CDC guidelines. Whether you have been impacted by store closures, reduced store hours, school closures or being limited in visiting an older uh, older loved one, we know that this outbreak is impacting all of you personally and professionally in different ways. We will continue to adjust our operations based on any future local, state or federal developments. And I hope that, as always, you exercise your caution uh, and safety through these unprecedented times. I know that a number of you have been voluntarily coming to work to support the millions of Americans facing unprecedented challenges as we adapt to a new normal. We believe we 
have and can continue to have a positive uh, positive impact during this very challenging time. We continue to closely monitor local, state and federal updates and guidelines and we are complying with all state, county and local ordinance. However, let me state clearly, in any location that continues to operate, we will uh, not make you work if you don't feel comfortable doing so. Please coordinate with your supervisor if that is the case. We respect that everyone has personal situations and preferences, so your decision will not I impact your position within the company. Uh... Da, 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 da. Yeah, there we go. Let's leave it at that. We don't need to jump through. So essentially, GameStop uh, kept their stores open, but now uh, they have closed the stores. They're looking to be working to support their staff and are doing a delivery-only service. Is, it, is that Do right? Do you reckon that they kept it open until the likes of Doom and Animal Crossing had gone out of the door? Uh, do you know what? That's a very, very good question. Uh... Because it was only last Thursday they were selling. Was it what game was it that they were selling first? Was it Animal Crossing that they were selling like a day early? Yeah. Um, and then they were selling Doom on the Friday as normal. But it's very interesting. I think genuinely that they kept the doors open to get them two games out the door because they knew that they were the two biggest games that was happening in the in the next month or so, until probably Resident Evil comes out in a week on Friday, which we will be streaming on this account. Uh, <laughs> and then, obviously, Final Fantasy comes out after that. So I think they was hoping to try and get these out the door to make as much money as possible, close it for hopefully two weeks, and then reopen it again afterwards when the new games are due to come out. Uh, I would never have thought of that. I would have just thought it would have been... Um, a, a step removed in terms of the longer we can stay open, the more money we can get, which obviously it's the same thing, but the way you said it is a very more detailed and probably real world account of what's happened. Um, the, th the thing for video games retail, uh, and there's been a number of people that have worked in video games retail that, were the, that are in the chat or could be in the chat um, that may be able to say this is, you will find that obviously your store right down to the, the POS, the point of sale items, the artwork, the branding within the store is hugely based around product releases. That, that's the thing. It's the marketing thing. You want to build up to the next big news and everyone comes in and buys it. And you, you, you as, as uh, sales staff within the store, you'll have targets and incentives to make sure you sell more and things like that. So building all the way up to this launch for two games, Doom, which has had essentially two launch periods, the build up to October last year, and then obviously defaulting, which will then increase the demand for the launch of Doom this year. Um, and as well as that, on the same day, Animal Crossing, which is massive. Uh, I mean, not for me. I mean, I, I, I will play Doom. I probably won't play Animal Crossing. But the the idea that two games are on the same day for, for a, a brick and mortar video game store is like Christmas. So yeah, absolutely. I completely agree that they could have been like, okay, well, we'll just take we'll just take day one uh, trading for these games, and then we will look at stopping. Uh, which, do you know what? I'm kind of, I think it's shit. I do think it's shit. Uh, I don't know what the situation is like on the ground in the US. So if there's any Americans in the chat, please feel free to let us know. Um, I know that that forcing your staff to work. Um, without providing the right care provision and, and opportunities for them to not go into work is shit. Uh, but playing devil's advocate, GameStop has, has been having a lot of difficult times recently. If they are wondering, if, they, if they've if they done their uh, risk mitigation kind of thing yeah, and uh, projected that actually, if we can just get through this day, then that will keep the business open for six months solid at least. We can then offer uh, this level of financial support and things to our our, our uh, our workforce could that extra day be what's giving them the uh, the freedom to close the doors so readily I, I generally think so I can't imagine the amount of money that they would have generated over Animal Crossing and Doom Eternal on Friday imagine they closed it on Wednesday two days before these games was due to go out it, it potentially that could, considering all the problems that they've had do you, I, re I genuinely reckon that they would have sent them under, ne or near enough on the brink of sending them under, because these these big AAA games that come out are the difference between closing a store and keeping a store open, never mind the thousands of stores that they've got across the country. Yeah, and that's that's one of those, it's one of those sort of like, it's not even a moral 
uh, ethic argument versus financy argument because there's morals and ethics on both sides of him. It's one of those sort of like horrible situations. You know, in the ideal world, you do not endanger anyone. You don't go into work, we'll shut the stores and boom, that's it, it's fine. But in doing that, by not providing, um, you, you, will, you will not be able to provide any sort of financial backing, support and employment, not only to yourself, but to your workforce. Um, which means that they won't then be able to feed their family and everything that's going on and puts a lot more uncertainty around it. What is the yeah. what is the ethical high ground there? Um, and some people will have strong leanings towards one way or the other, and and that's 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 perfectly fine. It's 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 a, a very subjective situation until you have all of the details. But that's where it's so difficult. If it was built on the fact that we can take a bajillion pounds in twenty four hours and stop. Uh, we can cut off, we have our reserves now, we can look after ourselves, our business and our employees um, then it's it's not as bitter a pill to swallow, if it was okay, well let's make it, force everyone to go into work onto the front lines where they're getting coughed all over so we can get a shitload of money and to build our nest egg then that's a, that's a completely different situation then. Uh, Do you reckon that there would have been allowed to come out with a statement like that, though? And when I say allowed, I mean, do you reckon that people would have said, oh, well, you're putting profits before your staff's health? Do you reckon that it would have been a good message for them saying, can we just get these two games out of the way, then we'll look after everybody else? Or do you reckon them having the bad press for like the three or four days that they was getting it because of this situation would have been worth it? No, I don't think they could have done um, because of shareholders. If they'd have said, yeah. we need the money, shareholders are going, okay, sell. And then the, the company just, <laughs> just, just dissolves anyway. Oh, so you, you just admitted that you are financially unstable, but yet you want me to keep my investments in you. I'm going to get rid of those, thank you. Uh, so it, that would have just been corporate suicide by doing that. They would have just sent the company under. Uh, so by doing the, yeah, everything's fine, we're trading and looking after each other. As, yeah. a, as a business, that's kind of the only route you can take if you're about to do that. Not that it's the only route you can take, but yeah. Bacon Chin says, game was just as bad. Uh, they still have their head office open and anyone stating they're not happy has been threatened with some sort of misconduct. What? Yeah, yeah but the, <clears throat> listen, right, if they was to do that, I am fairly certain there would have been a... I'm fairly certain with game there will be some sort of... Um, oh, shit, what's it called? NBA? Union. Oh, okay. No, they will, they will have a union that would... 100% be able to turn that over do you know what I mean like having that kind of threat at that kind of level considering what is going on with the government legislation saying stay indoors unless it's absolutely essential game is not an essential part of the UK and we've seen that over the last three or four years with the way that everything's been with the way they've been treating everything so regardless of the fact if that was the case Surely you'll have a leg to stand on when it comes to be able to get some money back off that or whatever. Jumping back through, Magic's Man says, finally they react after loads of negative press and complaints from staff. It's funny you say that because... Um, Did you see the Waterstones tweet this weekend? That's exactly what I was just about to say. It's funny you say that because Waterstones... Um, I, I, I'm just going to see... I'm looking at what their current situation is socially because i know there was a bunch of staff uh, they, they put something out saying we've had loads of people requesting that we stay open in these difficult times and you think it i mean i saw it at first and it just bounced off me i was thinking do you know what okay if they're looking after their staff if they're not forcing people to come in if if they have proper stringent rules in terms of not letting so many people in the store and having distancing within the store as well so social distancing being properly played out if people want to chase academia and education and to help support i mean my little one is downstairs uh, doing uh school work at, she's working from home she's essentially been homeschooled um but she can she can get access to books. There's, there's something called Epic, epic.com or getepic.com. It's like basically a school reading service. And they've done the, an amazing thing by the service that's usually paid for. They've given it access to all schools and just said, look, it's free. Uh, sign up for your schools and we'll give your kids access to this learning stuff. Um, but if that's not available everywhere and, and, and you need access to education, I was thinking, oh, fair enough, what's done? So they want, they see the importance of knowledge and education and books uh, wonderful, wonderful. And like I said, I didn't really think into it. I just thought if they're doing the right healthcare provision, fair play. Um, but following on, there's been numerous uh, Waterstones staff uh, essentially posting 
what someone else has said in the in the chat. There we go. That comes from people working there, speaking and on. They don't allow uh, they don't allow unions says Bacon Chin talking about game. But Waterstone, similar number of staff have been posting. Okay, I'm stood in in a store. I've got people coughing and spluttering. I'm having to handle money that other people have been touching, putting in the pockets with their snotty tissues and stuff like that. Um, but yet there is no social distancing being deployed. There is no hand sanitizer. They don't have any. They don't have any gloves. They don't have any masks or anything to help deflect the germs. But Waterstones at the same time are put are sharing internal like company reports of yeah our profits are up one hundred percent today and it's like <laughs> great. Great, wonderful. Let's all high five over those profits without touching each other, uh, because we're all gonna die. So yes, one hundred percent of death is wonderful. Uh, so yeah, I mean, what what was it you were gonna mention? Was that the same thing, or were you gonna mention something specifically about them? Because you said, did you see their post? No, it was just uh, because the the social post that that person particularly put out with that the thirty thirty thread tweet. Uh, that I think that that was the way that forced Waterstone's hand to respond to them in the first place because it would have fallen on deaf ears if this person would have gone to the manager and said, look, this is taking the piss a little bit now. We've got 80-year-old people coming into the shop. They're coughing all over the gaff. I'm having to serve them, touching books and whatever it could be, handling money or whatever. This is this is an outrage kind of thing. I, I definitely think it would have fallen on deaf hands. Otherwise, the manager would have gone, what do you want us to do? Like We're being told from above that this isn't, we need to still be here. So this person putting this tweet out and then getting the reaction that they have from what seems to be the world with the amount of people that have reacted to it, the press have started to get involved. And I think off the back of that, Waterstones, someone shared it with the bloke who owns Waterstones and said, you need to have a look at this. That's then forced his hand to put a statement out. I don't think the statement would have been brought out if nobody brought it up in the first place. It's funny. Uh, a visual representation of exactly what you just said there babe um i open the browser there we go waterstones our physical shops will be closing at the end of today to help mitigate the possible spread of coronavirus until it's safe time to open again we will be here to satisfy all of your bookish needs through our website and app waterstones.com but then you scroll down to the first non-waterstones comment um because twitter decimated you over the weekend <laughs> hashtag boys got waterstones go. and no thanks i will never shop with you again uh it is that's just the top and bottom of it like it a lot of these people, a lot of these companies will not force their hand unless it's being forced. The threat of, uh, I know I know, Bacon Chin said that game doesn't have a union, but who's to, who's to say that there isn't one for Waterstones? That tweet has got so much interaction over the last two days that they've had to have the hand forced. And ultimately, they, in no certain terms, the whoever it was that's just replied to that, they have been decimated over this weekend. There's no two ways about that. They've had the hand forced. That's it. You, you you can pretty much wave bye bye to your custom from people who have been absolutely disgusted with that kind of um, with that kind of narrative that they're pushing. There you go. As Mav says, usual stuff. Shame into doing what should have happened already, which is exactly what's being echoed in in the comments there. Shame it took one of your employees raising concerns to do so. Some money grabbing top tier you have. Uh, wouldn't have anything to do with that tweet now, would it? It's a pity you made the responsible decision. Uh, you didn't make the responsible decision in the first place. Lives over money, never the other way around. Uh, which, do you know what? Um, a little bit of uh, unforced corporate self-promo. GG to uh, the team at Jelly Media. Uh, me and Bibby aren't in the studio today because we are working from home, um, which is which is nice. And do you know what? It's, it's shit because I've been having conversations. I posted a message out basically saying that this morning and I've had... Uh, multiple people already telling me that they aren't being afforded the same level of care. So it just it just shows you that all it takes is a situation that's difficult for a company to show you how much they truly value you. And if I was working at Waterstones, I that would if I enjoyed my job, if I was hugely into books and having those Harry Potter events or having authors come in to to, to read through their books and be it someone big or some some like indie sort of author kind of thing. I'd love all of that, but this would kind of uh, bring it down to me that, yeah, okay, I'm doing all this, but the company, I'm just, just another number that's just earning a few quid for them. So, yeah, it's shit that we've seen that uh, Waterstones like that, as uh, Enix and Bacon Chin have said, Gamer like that, and um, obviously GameStop were like that as well. So uh, it's, it's difficult. It is difficult for companies. Don't get me wrong. It is. Uh, like if you're in GameStop situation and, and you 
could your company could go under. There is that side of things, but as as the chat said, not the chat, oh, as the tweet said, lives over money it should always be. Uh, if you're making that decision, then how far have you fallen down that rabbit hole? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Uh, but anyway, 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 let's move on. We have. Uh, one more bit of news, and it's a little bit—it's a little bit nicer than talking about diseases and germs and things like that. As we can see, written by Give Me Sport. Uh, welcome, Andrew yeah. Nealon, and Give Me Sport. You have made it. You can. Do you know what? Get your phone out. Text your mum now. We'll hold it on this screen for just a second. Have you got your photo? Nice. Tell your mum that you have made it, as you've now been covered on uh, the biggest gaming podcast in the world the uk's number one gaming podcast your isolation isolation station even uh, this is ice cream uploads you are on the scoop gg uh a new spyro game is reportedly in development says the article uh now i finished chatting shit i will go into the actual news uh, two years ago saw the successful return of spyro the dragon with the reignited trilogy which was packed with nostalgia as it featured remastered versions of the series first three games which many see as the best installments. It was amazing to be able to go back to simpler times, but what would be more amazing would be Activision bringing back Spyro for some brand new adventures. It has now been over a decade since we've last seen an original installment in the Spyro series, and if the remasters proved anything, it's that there is still plenty of interest in the dragon. This is something that is reportedly not going to miss by publisher Activision, who are now apparently looking into developing an entirely new game for the fan favourite series. As for now, this is only just rumour and should be taken with a pinch of salt. The rumour was started by The Gaming Revolution, who has a pretty decent record uh, with Call of Duty rumours and with both COD and Spyro being Activision owned. There may be some truth to the rumour. The tweet admid admittedly doesn't offer much information. But the wording of it does seem to imply that this instalment will be a brand new game rather than another remaster. When the gaming revolution was pressed for more information by fans, they simply replied that we should expect more information on the game in the coming months, before further adding that the game probably won't release until 2021. In the article, there is a tweet embedded, and uh, strap yourselves in because this is going to be quite a long tweet to read. A new Spyro game is in the works. There we go. Uh, Bibby's muted, or is he just chuckling away quietly to himself? Oh, sorry, yeah, Samantha came up the stairs. I thought she was going to talk to me. <laughs> I just saw you chuckling away on the screen to my left. <laughs> uh, according to the Gaming Revolution, Activision have quite the busy year uh, on their hands. They've already reported that they have numerous projects on the go, with Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Remastered whew, and Modern Warfare 2 Remastered whew, being two of the most notable. And of course... As a new year comes, a new Call of Duty game is to be expected. Is, is, is that not what Modern Warfare 2... two I do, what? Anyway, anyway, if these rumours have truth behind them, then it is likely we'll find out more at some point this year amid the coronavirus crisis. However, it is unsure when developers will announce their games as gaming conventions have been put in down. Well, my first comment, uh, let's just pick about the end bit. Uh, we won't know when game announcers will come this year. I reckon game announcers will follow the same sort of timeline because the reason the events and stuff happen at specific points in the calendar is because it's all built around Christmas and selling and the marketing schedules. So expect things to, I say, expect things potentially to continue around the same timeline, even if it's yeah. just digital content and not at E3, uh, live out of the Staples Centre for the Xbox conference or whatever. They will try stick coronavirus permitting to the same timeline. We'll just be doing it on online. I think so too, yeah. Uh, would you be interested in a new Spyro game, babe? Uh, I would, actually, yes, because I do. I didn't buy the remaster ones. However, on my little IG350 that I've got, that plays my PS1 games, I do have Spyro the Dragons on them. Uh, I do I do love a good Spyro game, and I'm a big fan of Crash as well. So it's interesting to see if they are going to go down the route of new Tony Hawk's game, new Spyro game, and then potentially a new Crash game as well. And a new Modern Warfare 2 game, as well as a new Call of Duty game. <laughs> uh, I wonder if he was actually talking about two different games, or if or if he didn't realise that Modern Warfare and Call of Duty were the same thing. Uh, do you know Who what? knows? We'll, we'll give Andrew Neal and give me Sport the benefit of the doubt, because they've made it onto the scoop, so clearly they know what they're about. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get it there. You know how uh, no, I found this article, by the way? How? Because I saw... The th I saw a thumbnail on Instagram from the Gaming Bible, which I don't understand. Like this, they, I say this isn't a dig at them. It, it actually is because they report the news, but they don't put the sources. So they say, "Oh, new Sparrow the Dragon coming," 
but they don't say where. They don't say who's written it. They don't say where they found out the information nope. or anything. So I had literally just googled new Spyro game, and then this is the article that I found. I'm not. But I don't. Is it, this is this is the difference between us and everybody else in it, Graham. Do you know what I mean? We put our show notes into the notes at the end of it. So if you are watching this on youtube you just scroll down you're able to see the show notes if you watch it on twitch you can do the same thing or even if you're listening to this on spotify have a look at the show notes on there just slide it across a little bit you'll see all the articles that we find all this stuff so you can read it yourself nice plug good effort love it i know mate it's, it's a you flawless you? slip I mean, that one in there you, you, on one hand you were saying how good we are compared to lad bible, uh, gaming bible and on the other hand you're plugging away motherfucker <laughs> uh, yeah. Wrong approach. I mean, I don't, I don't mind gaming Bible's content in terms of they know how to market content well to get exposure and things like that. But they don't necessarily do it above board by by going, oh, there's new Sparrow news. How do you know that? Yeah, you, they could. If that's the case, then they could just be saying, oh, there's a new Tekken game coming. How do you know that? Yeah. Where yeah. have you got that information from? Have you just seen that on Twitter? Like. Give us a bit more information, and that's 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 the shit thing with that's selfish journalism. It's all about look what I know, and it, it's like yeah, but you know it because you've got it from someone else. Who is the someone else? It's like you've got to give the source. That's the reason why. For those of you that may not know why we call out who gives the articles and the content, because we don't just want to say oh we know there's a new Spyro game. Because how do we know? We know because we've read. Andrew Nealon's article that he's taken his time and effort and money to write for Give Me Sport. If we just talk about that without sourcing it, one, are we credible? And two, I mean, not that this is credible, by the way, this could be absolutely shambolic, but the fact that we have a source that we are basing yeah. our conversation on is the point. Um, and not, not only that, that's point one, we're basing our conversation on a source, whether it's real or legitimate or not, that's what we try to pick apart. But the other bit is, someone's then put the time and effort and money to put that together. If we just take it as, as ourselves, that's theft, basically. So, yeah, so yeah, so I gave me Bible, lads. So, uh, the, the one... The one that I don't like, the way that they do it, is where they'll, they'll post like a clip of a video um, and then not tag the person, but then tag them in the first comment. And it's like, that's a separate post to me. Uh, if it has a separate yeah. URL, then that's a separate post. So tag them in the first one rather than trying to ignore them and give them follow-up content. Because a lot of people go, oh, that's pretty cool, and retweet it, but never look at the comment string. So, yeah. so sort out, mate. So sort out. If there's uh, no, morning, Ryan. If there's no characters, fair enough, fair enough. Good morning! Uh, it's just bad journalism. Exactly, Magic Man. Absolutely. Um, putting the ice into isolation gaming. Oh, we need ice isolation station, but with ICE bib. <laughs> I know, yeah, but if no one knows the joke, then we're, it just, we just look like idiots. What's an. Because <laughs> I'm terrible at spelling anyway. What's an Ikeolation station? No, it says Isolation. <laughs> we'll have to do it as like. Maybe we'll have to hyphenate it. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. We'll have to do it as those, those sort of like. Um, or Tron things where you got like ice hyphen O hyphen lation ice O lation station. Uh, <laughs> I like it. Uh, I don't know if it's because Edging Christian match Bibby showed me on his stream. Uh, I was expecting you to say we'll keep it on screen for five seconds for those that doesn't have the benefit of flash <laughs> photography. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Uh, the, uh, honestly, though, there will be like WrestleMania watch alongs at some point on here. Ones that I can find on YouTube so we can all watch it together rather than me saying, okay, we're going to press th we're gonna press live in three, two, one, and then someone's buffers, and then you're out of sync then. But I will find more clips so we can watch through. Yeah. That was sick. I enjoyed it. It's a, good, a good reacting to slash. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you know, one day we may get to the point where we can co stream events like uh, WWE, but the fact that BT have just bought it all. Uh, man, I'm not so sure. Not, not anytime <laughs> soon. Anyway, um, uh, it's just bad journalism, which is a large contingent of gaming sites and sources. Terrible journalism everywhere, uh, uh, says Magic Man and Enix. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I have a journalism degree as well, so it particularly ticks me off. Um, fuckers. Uh, w T. What does W T stand for? What? Okay, is that actually what it is? The word what? I don't know. I, <laughs> I just, I just said it how we, how it read. It's just, what? a it's just the fact that it was in caps. I was like. World Union of Teachers? I don't know. <laughs> Sonic T-shirts for Sonic Forces. Uh, I'd, I'd kill for a Sonic the Hodgehog T-shirt. Sonic the Hodgehog. Anyway, 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 anyway. I think we're pretty much done for today. Yes. Um, so, yes, that is the wrap for the scoop. Um, let me just 
just hide the disgusting Oh, God. Oh, God, yeah, Rise. I, I have actually got the Metacritics up here. I got them up at the beginning of the stream. Oh. I didn't add them to it. Okay. Shall we go through the first two results? We should. Let's, let's, let's make Bib go big screen. Let's, let's jump into the Big Bib household. There we go. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I mean, if you wanted to show this on screen, shall I just send you... Uh, I, I don't know the best way of sending this oh, to you. Oh, go on, then. Go on, you can... Uh, have you got Schlackage? Schlack me yes. the link. Uh, okay, so that's the first one. And the, oh, and then I've got uh, the actual Metacritic pages up here as well. I did pull these up at the beginning of the stream, uh, but I didn't add them to the bottom of the show notes. Okay. Uh, let me bring that. Oh, actually. Hmm. Reject cookies. Reject all cookies. I'd rather have bland adverts. Uh, and then that one as well. There you go. Okay, okay. Uh, let's, let's, we'll, ju we'll jump back to split screen then. Um, discussing now. Our meta. Do we have a name for this? Uh, uh, I've literally put the the, ice, the, uh, the tagline for the Google sheet is Ice Cream Uploads presents Metacritic Score Game 2020. <laughs> the most generic name that I could have. That I, I just needed to separate it from everything else that I've got on my Google Sheets. Okay, there we go. So we know you're all tense and you all want to know. So basically, the gist of what happened is Bibby in his in his in his journey for exciting and engaging content has decided that we are going to have a very important competition that doesn't really mean anything other than bragging rights but still it counts so we <laughs> have the lovely named icu metacritic score game 2020 so and it's essentially we have a number of games coming out in the games industry um well, hopefully we have. Um, and some of them are already out. They came out last week. But anyway, we've asked you for your input on what you think their overall Metacritics will be, either on PS4 predominantly or the platform that is as later. So the reason I say that is because Doom is out on PS4, Stadia, uh, Xbox, PC. We're going to just stick to PS4. However, Animal Crossing is out on Switch. So obviously we can't take the PS4 version for that. We'll take the Switch version. Um but yeah, obviously that kind of makes sense. Anyway, we've asked people uh, in the chat for their input on what the scores will be for each game. We've then put those uh, sheets, uh, scores into a sheet, which you should be able to see. There. Ta -da. Okay, let's hide that again. Um, I'm going to zoom, 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 zoom. There we go. So... I'll highlight. We'll start off with Animal Crossing because that's sheet one. Uh... Right, so we've got a little bit of a stipulation here. Oh, really? Yes. Because we need to try and figure out how we could actually do this. Now, do we give do we give a point? To, so, shall we give three points for the score being bang on, and then one point for the for the closest to the score? Uh... If they're not back, if there was, if the first score wasn't taken. So, do you, want to, do you want me to give you a reason as to why? Yes, go on then. Okay, so uh, looking at the scores, then I don't know if it, I don't know if the rest of it, have you brought it up on screen so everyone can see it. Not at the moment. Uh, right. But I can do. Uh, oh, uh, oh, there we go. Okay, so as you can see in the scores, then Asim has given it a ninety, and Rise has given it a ninety-two for Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing actually came in at a 91. Ooh. So no one actually got the correct score, but we've got two people who were a point off. Uh... So do you reckon then, because you can have the closest to the score, which is one point, and then the actual uh, the actual score is three points? Hmm. I think that will work for us now because we haven't had too many people in. I think we, we would, when we have... Like if this grows and we add more people into it, then we'll have so many people spreading the numbers that someone will almost always get the three. Yeah. So I think we yeah, well, let's run with that for now. But going forward, it might be better off doing something like it. If you're within five, you get one point, regardless of whoever gets closest. If whoever gets the closest and doesn't get it directly on, if no one does, gets two points. If someone hits it directly on, they get three points. So okay. So Animal Crossing got ninety-one on Switch. 
Uh, yes, it did. So both Rise and Asim both get one point each. Okay, let me just. Uh, where was it? Where was it? Where was it? It was there. Animal Crossing, for those of you that don't know, let's hit full screen on that. Oh no, it's not in the right window. Bugger. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, so Animal Crossing. There. There we go. As you can see, Animal Crossing 91 score. Let's hit that full screen so you can see it a bit clearer. 91! For Animal Crossing. Uh, and jump back into the sheet then. So here's the table. Uh, Asim 90. We'll make it a little bit more prettier. Rise 92. Nobody hitting it, so nobody gets three points. So those two were the closest joints. So 91. So there we go. Um, Magic Man says, I didn't enter, but 89 would have been my guess. And it would have been better than mine. I put 86. Uh, I put 73. <laughs> I did not think it was going to go well. I thought it was going to go well, but I just assumed that um, it's it's done well before. I thought it was going to go for the... Ah, uh, oh, do you know what? It's like it. I like it. It's really good, uh, but it's not as good as I remember. Uh, yeah. where, whereas clearly in 91, it was as good as I remember. Both wrong. Uh, <laughs> um, but Madge, you can take part, but you'll have to take part in the Half-Life from Half-Life Alex onward now. Um, obviously because the games have already come out and the scores that you are giving are very close <laughs> to what actually came out so yeah um uh, but yeah yeah if you can see what if you if you can see them on screen i'll put the i'll put them in here if you give me the scores for them i'll add you to the sheet no problems uh so magic man says uh ah oh, for the new ones yeah yeah so magic yeah, yeah. if you want to drop in your scores for half-life alex resident evil 3 remake final fantasy 7 remake and predator hunting grounds then we can put those on the sheet so whilst you're doing that so obviously we know that animal crossing came in at 91 we already know that rise and asim are the closest the other score that we have already is obviously this one doom eternal so before we jump into the score a quick reminder uh, the top end of the spectrum, we've got Bibe with 92, Enix with 90. At the bottom end of the spectrum, we have Rise with 65, <laughs> Mr. Bamba with 76, and myself with 79. Um, uh, but the actual score, uh, let me just bring that on screen, uh, is... Did, 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 did. Oh, actually, can I do it? I need to do that. There we go. 88, uh, which is pretty close to what Magic said. We all believe that. that, that <laughs> yeah, we know, we know. Uh, so, Doom Eternal PS4 gets 88. Obviously, it is on different formats. Um, I believe it was higher on Xbox, or it was last week anyway. Um, but, uh, obviously, we're only running off of the PS4 version. So, Doom gets a score of 88, which, if we jump back into our sheet, Next Gen Renegade, da, 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 da. Mr. Craig Pitt gets three points from his guess from Doom Eternal there. Uh, next closest would have been Asim again. Oof, one away again. So basically, look at Asim's scores going forward and just choose one up or down and you're probably nailed on <laughs> to getting it. Uh, my original guess was, was it 82? Uh, or was it 83 or uh, something yeah. like that? I can't remember. Oh, no, no one's got it. It must have, it must have been... Oh, I think it was. I think it was eighty-four. I think that's what I'd said originally. But Luke had it, so rather than going up, I went down. So I went down to seventy-nine. I still wouldn't have got it though. Uh, Craig absolutely on the money with eighty-eight. Spike would have had a closer guess than me. Fatman Dave with a closer guess. Asim with a closer guess. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Good effort. Good effort. Fatman Dave says I was one away exactly. Eighty-seven. Uh, looking at Predator Hunting Grounds. That's gonna be that's gonna be an interesting interesting one to see who gets closest with that one. Uh, do you know I, I looking at my scores for Predator Hunting Grounds? I think I may have overestimated as well at, seven, <laughs> at, at seventy one. Uh, I think, yeah, it could it could be. But then again, seven seven isn't it's a shit game. Seven out of ten, or seventy <laughs> out of a hundred, is it's a good game. It's just not amazing. So it could, it could be good. It could be good. Um, Rice says, "I still refuse to accept that score. If I have to go uh, and tank that rating, I will." <laughs> <laughs> so, oh God! So, somebody check on Rise. Make sure he's okay. <laughs> I don't think he's too happy at the moment. Uh, he's not happy with the scores. So actually, I bring that back up again. Quick reminder then. Uh, if I hide the discussing now, because I've been hiding it all this time, 
the bottom of the bottom of the table there we can see uh name scores so at the moment next gen renegade has a three for his uh doom eternal score of 88 on the money and then rise and asim both with one point each for being one point away on animal crossing um yeah uh, so, so this is where i was saying going forward it might be worth adding in a if you're if you get it on the money you get three points if yeah if nobody gets it on the money um then whoever is closest gets one point and uh or, or no whoever is closest gets two points um and then everyone who's within five gets one point because that way See, i think five's a lot i think it would have to be down to like three yeah yeah good point good point good point i, I think yeah because yeah, most games that have done a decent job are going to be between seven and uh, 70 and 100 so there's only 30 to play with there so five is quite a bit actually i think you're right actually do you know what sack it off completely you're right let's stick with let's stick with on the on the money or first and that's it that's it that's it let's leave it there let's leave it there uh uh like i said as well i need predator to be 100 or i have completed my mission uh <laughs> <laughs> well there's only two words i can say to that mate and that is good luck because <laughs> that is not going to review any <laughs> anywhere close to being anywhere higher than 70 or no 80 it's not going to get anywhere close if you was to take it on a out of 10 scale do you reckon that it would have been a, a predator will be a 10 out of 10 do you reckon that it'll even be an 8 out of 10 i don't think so uh, I, I'm guessing just marginally over seven out of ten, maybe a seven point <laughs> one. Uh, that's seventy one. Um, uh, I've seriously high hopes for it. Could you not just make it if people tie uh, one off, they get one point? Yeah, that's what we've done with it so far. So for because Animal Crossing was ninety one, uh, Asim got ninety, and you you rise got at ninety two. So you both kind of tied because it's in between you. So you both got one point because you were the closest to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, if Asim was on 89, then you would have got one point because you didn't exactly get it on. You would have been the only one that got a point. Asim wouldn't have got one. But because you're both one point out, then it's only fair to give you both a point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I'd like Predator not to be bad, says Magic Man. Me too, me too. I really like Predator films. Uh, um, just if there. Yeah, I'll take I'll take an iffy Predator game. That's fine by me. I'd be happy enough with that. Uh but yes, there we go. That is the update. As the Ice Cream Uploads Metacritic score game, uh, let me bring that back on screen, uh, stands Ice Cream Uploads very own Next Gen Renegade, hashtag rigged, hashtag fixed, hashtag whatever, mate. Uh, Next Gen Renegade has a score of three. Rise and Asim are the other two podium places with joint second place with one point each. Uh, so Rise says, yeah, that makes sense. And what I'd say makes sense. I'm, I'm gassing for a great Predator game because it has so much potential. It does. It absolutely does. I mean, the reason we have a Predator Hunting Grounds game is because the idea and concept of, of Predator and, and the films and the whole world is stuff that that we are still resonating with 20, 30, 40 years later, whatever it is. Was it, eight, was it 80 or so, 30-odd years-ish yeah. later? Um so yeah, the, the reason it's still here is because it's it's good, but yeah, no one's doing it justice. Don't diss the Yaucha, uh, the Predator in universe name. Oh, there you go. Fat Medusa says ninety-seven, eighty-seven. I think I think David's breaking down. <laughs> <laughs> He's just hoping for a Predator game. Bless him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, so that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Obviously, we were going to wrap it up ten minutes ago, but we forgot about the ICU Metacritic score game. The uh, Predator was eighty-seven. Ah, oh, eighty-seven. Okay, okay. Uh, heck, I got the Jaguar for AVP. Uh, as in the ah, oh, Atari Jaguar, yeah, 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 yeah. Is it the Atari Jaguar? Are we talking about? Did it AVP come out on the Atari Jaguar? Yeah, we did have one come out for the Xbox 360 as well, which I actually didn't mind. Um, and there was Alien Colonial Marines as well, which I didn't mind, but again, reviewed h horrifically. <laughs> yeah, like the one I showed the stuff. other day. I got a uh, Predator Concrete Jungle for the PS2, and it got like 68 or something. Uh, so I don't have a uh, big hope. Do you know? What? Let me see. I'm gonna predator concrete jungle is not on Metacritic. Oh, there it is. Uh, PS2 game, 47. That's what it got. 47, not even 68. <laughs> uh, so uh, there we go. This is what predators. Uh, previous history has that I can attend to. A user score of 8.7, which obviously users do what they want to do, but Metacritic of 47. So, in that sense, 
we don't have high hopes, but you never know. You never know. Uh, so there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That is the end of the scoop. That is the end of the stream. But we will be back at 10 a.m. in the morning, as we are all week, every week, uh, for the foreseeable at least anyway, with more scoopalicious action for you. Obviously, if, if you want to get involved, feel free to come back. I mean, there is a button just kind of there-ish, a bit further up in the top corner, which allows you to follow the channel. You don't have to do that. It's free. Feel free to do it if you want. Um, if you did drop in from Tharion, uh, Duke's, uh, I can't speak, Tharion Drake's stream um, and you've liked what you've seen, then please feel free to hit follow on the channel, just like Tharion Drake did too. Very much appreciate it. And uh, thank you everyone else that has followed and subbed. Cheers, Chucky Boy. Um, much, much appreciated. It all helps and goes into the channel and helps us keep doing this kind of thing for you. So feel free to follow. You will get notified when we go live again. But obviously... If you like it, do it. If you don't, then you don't have to. You don't have to. Uh, but anyway, that's kind of it from us. Anything you want to add before we disappear, Bip? I so any if you do see any video game news that's knocking around the video game hemisphere, which I do think that in the next coming weeks there will be a lot. Hopefully not all around the coronavirus. But if you do see anything that you want to have your thoughts and impressions on, then do feel free to tag. We've got with B and Yo on Twitter at Graham underscore Day on Twitter, and most importantly. At ice cream uploads we'll take your thoughts and impressions add our thoughts and impressions and include them in the very next show yeah you got damn right we will just checking yes the chatbot is working i've just hit exclamation mark socials in the chat so that you can get links to all of our social media without even having to type anything spoilers it's at ice cream uploads everywhere uh but anyway have yourselves a very 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 lovely day ladies and gentlemen remember to keep away from each other because you're all minging uh, I'm not joking. No, <laughs> keep away from each other. Stay indoors if you can. Uh, feel free to watch some of our previous videos. They're all on YouTube. Just check it out. Yeah, if you want, you yeah. don't have to. You don't have to. And if you are a subscriber, this is the time for you to use that very shiny, brand new blue emote in the chat. And the reason is because you know when we leave, when we disappear, when we go off air, we always leave you with one message, ladies and gentlemen. That is, each and every single day, make sure you guys stay frosty.